Uh, Maria, talk to me about air pollution and health, but first, before we go to the big climate summit in Paris, let's talk about the issue of air pollution so that everybody is caught up to the same place. Uh, obviously, when there's a lot of air pollution outside, uh, it makes it hard for us to be active. It makes it hard to breathe, but it's more than that, isn't it? Uh, it certainly has an impact on the health aspects of us. Can you explain that to us, what's happening? Yes, it's certainly more than that. It's, it's so serious as uh, it's responsible for more than 7 million deaths every year. Can you believe it? So when you are exposed to different sources of air pollutants, this will result in more than 7 million deaths every year. Means one death every eight in the world each year. Premature deaths that can be avoided if we take the right decision. That's why we are saying that all of those diseases caused by exposure to, death, uh, to air pollution like uh, lung cancer, obstructive pro uh, uh, chronic pulmonary diseases, or asthma, or pneumonia, but as well cardiovascular diseases, which is the new thing, the new knowledge we have, and, and representing a major challenge for our society. Now, we mentioned it yesterday, but I'd like you to touch on it again today. What is happening this week here at the World Health Assembly with air pollution? There's, a, there's some major work going on. First of all, we have on Wednesday a technical briefing on uh, climate change, climate change and health. And what we are saying, one of the things we are saying during the technical briefing is that if you tackle the root causes of air pollution, in fact, you are contributing to reduce air pollutants and therefore contributing to reduce those 7 million deaths that are occurring every year and that link to the exposure of air pollution. But then, most importantly, is that for the first time in WHO, member states are discussing a resolution which, in my opinion, is very ambitious and definitely looking at the root causes of diseases and not just to the diseases, which is a resolution on air quality and health. Um, the member states are recognizing the importance of addressing this major public health issue, probably the biggest we have in front of us at the moment, and therefore they are recommending WHO to take more action, and they are recommending as well member states to take different interventions at country level to reduce this major challenge for our health. What kind of interventions are they suggesting? Well, actually, what we need to do is to put the scientific evidence on the table. That's the, the first thing. And this is what WHO did on linking diseases to the risk factor represented by air pollution. We identify the air pollutants that are bad for our health. We set up standards for them. We, we, many countries are now saying, according to WHO standards, this city is going above the, the, the recommended uh, levels and therefore it's bad for your uh, health. And that's good as well to disseminate that information because citizens are aware of that and they are putting a lot of pressure on their politicians for them to take action. More action is to monitor the quality of the air we breathe then, obviously, to propose interventions to reduce that air pollution, like uh, better and more sustainable uh, public transport system at the city level, energy efficiency in our homes when we heat or we, we cold our, our houses, uh, better industrial processes where we filter and we are not contributing to the emissions, agricultural policies, plenty of interventions that will be very beneficial for the environment, but more importantly, there will be extremely beneficial for human health. I bet a lot of you didn't realize that WHO sets those air quality standards on whether or not the air is actually going to do damage to your health. Let me ask you one other question. Air pollution is a really good example uh, to use for the challenges in health these days. Uh, it's not health in a silo anymore, is it? Health really cross, cuts cross, and when you're trying to reduce air pollution, uh, in a country, uh, the government really has to look at many different aspects of this. I mean, it affects not only the health sector, it affects trade, it affects economic aspects, it affects um, many different things. Talk about the challenges for a government to navigate some of those. It's fascinating because, in fact, people understand when we talk about diseases and then we say we need to control this disease. But when it is about the causes of those diseases, then you enter on the way the society Leave the way you develop your your urban, uh, uh, I mean, planning, the way you transport, the way you consume, uh, and the the way you will have your industrial production and the way you consume energy, everything. This is the most fascinating part of public health. 
We are not just here to treat diseases, which is an important part, but most importantly, we are here to influence choices, societal choices, to make sure that we select those that will be contributing more to health. It's difficult. I'm not uh, telling you that it's not difficult. It's very difficult. You need to convince the Ministry of Energy. You need to work with the Ministry of Environment, Agriculture, Finance. And you need to empower the Ministry of Health for, for him or her to have the right arguments to change and make sure that we have health in all policies. And you convert every minister on a Minister of Health. If it was easy, it wouldn't be a problem today, right? Exactly. That's right. Listen, these uh, green circles here mean that we have a question from Twitter. Uh, so let me tie two things together here. In December, there was a major climate summit that everybody is getting ready for. The question that comes from Twitter is, how seriously does climate change affect air pollution? Well, the, the thing is, the, the causes of climate change are very much related to the causes of air pollution, which means that if you take the right decisions on reducing greenhouse gases emissions, you will need to have a better public transport system and reduce the reliance on your private car and then reducing emissions caused by, by vehicles. You need to have a, a more sustainable and better access to clean energy all of those measures that you need to take to promote a sustainable development and an environment which is very friendly, those are public health measures. So by doing so, you will be contributing enormously to reduce air pollution and therefore to reduce those 7 million deaths that are a major, major problem for us. It's an enormous number and uh, it really shows that it's something that everybody's going to have to give a little bit into uh, if we're going to get where we Absolutely. need to Absolutely. Maria, thank you for coming by. Uh, My Maria pleasure. Maria is somebody who's not going to get a break the next six months, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of work to do before the conference in December. Thanks for stopping by, Maria.